people really liked my uh, update videos. They, I got a lot of good responses. People loved hearing about the chair. We're gonna talk about the chair. All right, I got this thing put together. I showed this in my last video. So this is a replica of a Herman Miller Eames lounge chair. They've made these in the 1950s up until now. I went to the Herman Miller Gallery here in Dallas, Texas, and you can buy this chair still. It looks exactly like this, brand new today, but you're gonna pay like six to $8,000 for one of these chairs. Now, granted, you can choose the color of wood and the color of the leather, but this is pretty much how everybody gets them. This is how you're gonna see it. And the things that I was told to look for on the replicas is this, for instance, they said, you wanna have seven layers of veneer plywood, of which there are. Okay. And there shouldn't be any visible screw holes, which there aren't. Now, I put this thing together, and I gotta say, one of the hardest things is putting these armrests on, and the seam to the armrest is here at the bottom. You won't be able to see it, but that's, and it gets wider in the back. And they're not marked, and I actually put them on a couple of times before I figured it out and got it right. Also, there's these brackets that go under here. Uh, you wanna put, you wanna put um, those brackets on this part of the back first, and then you're gonna have to have somebody help you because the, the wood is, is uh, shaped and somebody's gonna have to help squeeze the thing together to get it to fit right. That's how I had to do it. And once it's all put together, uh, it's, it's perfect. Anyway, I have to tell you that after going to the gallery and looking at the five, six thousand dollar chair, I could find no discernible difference whatsoever in those chairs versus this replica chair that was 600 bucks off Amazon. Now, this is the regular version. They make what's called the upgraded tall version, which you could spend twice as much and it's got better foam. It's, it's just a few inches taller. I'm really fascinated with mid-century modern furniture now. And these things were made in the you know late 50s. And, and Herman Miller did all of those like fiberglass bowl chairs and a lot of, you've seen his work or their work. Um, anyway, I'm working on something special with this chair, not only for myself, but for you, my audience. Well, as you know, my favorite colors are red and black. Now, all of the actual Herman Miller chairs, they only come in with a sort of a natural wood finish. Uh, I'm working, I'm trying, I'm reaching out to a couple of the companies that make these replicas and I want to make a video Bob edition of this chair. <laughs> I want at least one for me, but I'm going to have them offered up uh, to the audience as well, where the leather will be red. And maybe not a vibrant red like this because that's a little too gaudy, a little bit more of a wine red that's a little bit more acceptable for the home. And then an ebony finish for the wood. So a black and red video Bob edition chair. I'm working on that. I want at least one for me, uh, and then if I get, a, get it done, uh, I'll put up a, a link where other people could get it. But I'm gonna be doing some more looking into this. This chair is so unbelievable. Comp it's just, it's way better than a traditional recliner, in my opinion, and I think they're gonna make a huge comeback, and I wanna try to be part of that comeback. Um, but, you know, as far as the quality and the construction, I'm very happy with the replicas that are being made. And uh, for the, whatever, 600 bucks I paid for this thing, fantastic. But why anybody would spend $8,000 for one of these? There's nothing you could do to the wood or the leather of the chair to really make it worth that much more. Because it's just, you know, top grain leather, which is top grain leather. You can go down here into Fort Worth to Tandy Outlet and buy a hide of leather, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Leather's, you know, there, there's fine Italian leather that has no marks on it. Uh, and you know, there's like the leather that's used in the DeLorean and the leather that's used in the Rolls Royce. Yes, there is fine leather and you can get soft leather. You can get all, but it's a chair. Now, if you really want to spend 10 grand on a chair or just for the name, you go do that. But I'm very happy with this. So anyway, I wanted to update the thing about the chair because people were making comments and asking about it. All right. What else is going on? Oh, the shop. A little bit more progress done in here in the bathroom. Finally got the shower put in. We're testing out some tiles, see how we like that. Got the shower. I ordered the shower off of Amazon. Cost me a thousand bucks. And all you get is that pan and then the glass. And uh, we ended up just doing the walls in FRP. 
This stuff's about 45 bucks a sheet. You glue it to the wall, glue it, screw it, tattoo it. Nice little magnetic closure. This is really small though, like, it seemed bigger in the picture. I mean, yeah, I fit, but you know, we need to make a, a step here. Fan and we were trying to dry the caulk. Caulk. Of course, we got to keep the uh, cars rolling in. They're delivering a DeLorean today. Be here any minute like right now. This will be our 46th DeLorean time machine. 46, wow. We have built a lot of these cars. I can't believe how many of them we have made here at my shop. It's pretty impressive. So going back to the chair, I've reached out to a company or the company that makes these. Now, when I found their website, you know, the ones they're selling, they're selling for twice as much, like $2,000, $1,500, $2,000. But I've been talking to them, and they say that uh, these ones that are being sold on Amazon are made in their factory. And they, they do different um, quality levels of them, and they manufacture them. And so one of the things that is done is the wood, which is, um, you know, they're taking plywood and bending it you know, using a, a, a water steam method to bend it. And they do anywhere from a five ply up to an eight ply. And then they are treated with different, you know, stains or paints and things. And then they have different levels of leather all the way from a cheaper kind of a leather, you know, that's just your standard rawhide uh, pebbled grain. They call top grain, but they use that for everything. Up into this, uh, you know, finer Italian smooth leather. So you can spend anywhere from about six, seven hundred dollars up to two, twenty five hundred bucks, depending on the color. They have some really nice versions of the chairs. So I reached out to them and I wanted to do a collaboration with them. I want to do like a, a red video Bob edition chair and offer it to you, my fans, because I think we are we are going to start a revolution in the mid century modern Herman Miller Eames lounge chair replica sales. People are going to go nuts for these. Or maybe I'm nuts, but uh, I'm working on it. And so we're gonna, they're, they're gonna do a red chair for me. And um, I'm also doing another collaboration with a company that does Italian leather furniture that does these movie chair seating. They reached out to me and they said, look, we wanna send you one of our couches. It's like a $5,000 couch. They go, we will send you one of our couches if you will do a video review of it. And I go, oh, okay, I'm into furniture. I'll check it out, why not? People, people reach out to me for stuff like this all the time. And um, like somebody wants to give me a couch or a chair or a whatever, like as long as it's something that I like and that I'll use, but I tell them, here's the deal. Here's the deal. And a lot of people maybe don't think this is fair, but I go, look, if your product sucks, if the service sucks, if you screw this up, I am going to say it. I am not going to give you a positive review no matter what, just because you gave me something free. That's not how this works. You're taking a risk when you're working with the video Bob because I'm gonna be honest, no matter what. My hubcap was all jacked up, ordered a new one. I didn't realize this thing is plastic. Damn it, it's cheap shit. It's plastic. This thing was expensive too. Close enough. All right. Well, this one ain't so bad. I could have just spray painted it. I'll save it as an extra. That's what we'll do. There it is, car number 46. Shut up, you lappy, yappy little shit. Shut up. Did you see there's a DeLorean here? I hate yappy dogs. Go tell your friend to shut up. You seem to be cool.
you're nice. Go tell your friend to hush. Tell your friend to be quiet. Okay? Tell your yappy friend over there to shut his little face. There we go. Yeah, we do this all the time. These these drivers call me and they're like, uh, I can't get in down there. It's a dead end. I go, you can get in. You know how to drive a truck. You can do it. A lot of guys are doing hotshot rigs, so they got a truck like mine. Like, you know, this is a full-size carrier coming. We got this car from Gateway Classics in Denver, Colorado. Throw them a little bone. I had this car listed uh, it's a, as an 83. What well, you know. I can give you a history of DeLorean. They're basically all the same car. They made them from February 81 to February 82. There, so there were some cars left over that are titled as 83s, but in the end, they're all the same car. They're all DeLoreans. The only thing that changed between the model years was the crease on the hood, you know, whether it has a gas flap, grooves, or no grooves. Uh, a couple of the clocks are different. A couple of ashtrays are different, but you know, there was some antenna options, an antenna in the windshield, an antenna in the back, and on the fender. A couple of very small variations, but ultimately they're all kind of the same car. did that. It would have saved me like a hundred bucks. <laughs> we have like DeLorean parts everywhere. We just, you know, DeLorean doors, DeLorean fenders, DeLorean hoods, wheels, stuff. If you ever wanted to know what was underneath the skin of the DeLorean, these are a couple of skin DeLoreans that this is just the fiberglass sitting on the frames. These were some junk cars we bought for parts. I didn't realize I had that rim. Because I I thought I thought we had all the rims done. What's that rim doing there? You know, I took all the wheels off these cars. There's two more wheels. That's two rear wheels. Or those fronts. Those are rears. Anyway, we um, we bought these for parts. I got them real cheap. And I just wanted various things off the cars. You know, like this is a good fascia. This front fascia. We could sand that down and repaint it. And that's actually in good condition. It may not seem like it. But you have a fiberglass tub that sits on top of the frame. That's a DeLorean spare tire. Um, you can see the interiors of these things are made of plywood. Who's in a car made of plywood? No break. But uh, there's some good things on here, you know, that are hard to get. And um, I didn't pay a lot for these, but um, you know, this car obviously had a fire. But there are things, you know, the frames are good on these cars, a lot of other things. But <clears throat> I had a whole bunch of rims and we had them uh, sandblasted and powder coated so they're all new. I don't know why these two got missed. They didn't take them off the car. That's a mistake. I didn't realize that that happened. So here's the, wow, this car's been lowered. They're not normally that low. Somebody lowered this car. Really? All right, I'm going to teach you a trick. Okay. Uh, Europe, this is an English and French car. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Up. Back. Oh, so I had to pull it. You got okay. to pull it up. This is goofy. I don't know what that is. Okay. All right. Let me see. Okay. okay. You want me to close it or? Nah, leave it open. Let's see. Oh. There it is. Soft clutch. Let's have a look at it. it needs to be regrained. Somebody polished it. A couple of dinky doos there. Well, they really lowered this one. It's normally about four or five inches higher than this. But it looks cool, I guess. 
This is why we put the car on a lift, because it's so low, trying to work on it. This is weird. See, I always, every single DeLorean, like this is not a thing. Somebody put these there. But every DeLorean that I come across is different than the last. Like, this motor's clean though. Like, literally clean. That is a, I mean, that looks nice. No oil leaking, no smoke, no dust, no dirt. Car was in California, Arizona, then Colorado. It's gonna need some gas struts, not a big deal. Those little struts, they're like 20 bucks. Somebody changed the speakers. Let me tell you how I know this. See this? This is when they install the rear of the interior. It's a plastic and they fold it over, glue it in, and then they put the seam over it, the seal. In order to change these rear speakers right here, you have to rip all this out and people will rip apart the whole back of the interior just to put in speakers because they're stupid. Trying to figure out what's going on here. Somebody, where the clock goes, put in this screen. A couple of radio jacks, maybe. Turn the uh, power on. Whoa. I have never seen. Wow. That's a cool radio. I've never seen this. Line input. This is a cool radio. Okay, but what is this? It's like a power button. It doesn't seem to work unless there's a switch somewhere. People are always jerry-rigging their, the, like I said, every single time a car comes in, it's different than the last. Let's see how it starts. Nice. That's really good. That's actually really good. That thing started right up. We haven't had a chance to go through it. Catching a little gasoline smell, but that was from the cold start, but it started well. It's idling well, sitting at 47,000 miles, which is perfect. You want a high mileage DeLorean, you really do. That's the best thing. Um, let's see if this cold air comes on. Oh, I heard the uh, AC compressor kick when I turn the switch. That's a good thing. Let's see if cold air comes out. It's working because it pulled down the motor. Very nice. Let's see if these windows work. Yeah. Ah, this one. Uh oh, that one's off the track. Gosh darn it. Uh, that one works. So we're gonna have to rip that door apart and fix that. Probably gonna have to do these headliners, I think. Cold air. Cold air. Oh, I'm so happy. This whole panel is going to have to be replaced. We're just going to have to throw this right in the trash. So I'm going to order one of these, which I think I already have one in stock. Um, let's see, we got windshield wipers. Yes, we got windshield wipers. Horn. We've got lights. Turn signals. Brights. Not a bad car. You know, if the basic stuff works, you've got a pretty good car. I don't know how to turn this thing off. It was off earlier. Maybe function? No? Off. See you. I like how this thing folds up. That's pretty slick stereo, I gotta say. I like how clean that is. This is not a bad car. This is gonna make somebody a really fun time machine. Ooh, let's see what's in the trunk. There are sometimes treasures in the trunk. Ooh, we have, what do we have here? We have a official DeLorean car cover. Nice. Oh, and looky there. There's the bezel for the radio that was missing. And that little ring that goes her right there. 
Nice. Hit you! Woo! Dusty. Okay. Give you a little history lesson. The cars that came delivered from Ireland right off the boat were all trash. <laughs> they didn't work. So you'll see this sticker says DeLorean Quality Assurance Team, or, you know, the, these guys were called the Pogs. It's a long story. But anyway, what they had to do is as soon as the DeLorean came off the boat, they would immediately go and change the alternator usually because if it had the original Dulcier 90 amp alternator, it wasn't powerful enough to run the car. When they tested it in the cold of Ireland with no air conditioning, it worked. When it got to the heat of California and they turned on the air conditioner, they realized it wasn't powerful enough. They also had to install these uh, bezels onto the license plate covers. And they also had to raise the cars because what had happened is they were worried about, like you've probably seen those Lamborghinis that have that weird front bumper on. They had changed, or they were changing the bumper height requirements. So rather than redesign the car, they just put back springs in the front and raised it up four inches. That's why you most of the time when you see a DeLorean, it's got about that big of a gap between the wheel. And that's the way the one in the movie was too. And a lot of people lower their cars like this one, which does look good, but the car is already low as hell. Um, and there was a few other things they added, you know. Some people had to put front license plate brackets on, which kind of blocks the radiator a little bit. There's also a front crash bar that goes up underneath there. So just some various little things. See these little striker pins here? These things were added in. Uh, just little stuff. But um, it's arguable whether or not the older cars are better than the, quote, newer cars. So this one being a, uh, what, let's see, when was this made? I need to look at the titles on so this is an extra, so normally they're four digits. This one's got the extra digit, August of 82. So the thing is they were already out of business by February of 82. <laughs> That's why this title is an 83. This is something that somebody bought and stuck on there. We're gonna peel this off. This is just somebody, you know, people buy the stuff, people make stuff. Yeah, there we go. Jujaro, who designed this car, talks nothing but shit about this car. He hates the DeLorean. So, even though he designed it, great designer, he has no love for the DeLorean. So, fuck you, Jujaro. Always gotta take the car out for a simple voyage. Just take it around the block, see how it does. Steering seems kind of shit, uh, uh, stiff. Seems like it wants to drift to the left a little bit. Could just be a low tire. Clutch seems a little soft. I'm gonna go through and change all these fluids. Uh, but it, it's actually driving pretty well. Air conditioner's on. It's not bad, it's a little squirrely. I think it's the suspension package they put on here. Uh, I like the cars to be a little softer. This fan is making a whistling noise. It's kind of annoying. It's driving good. It's running good. I mean, that's the important part right there. If that's accurate, we'll get a laser out and check it. But, um, you know, you got decent voltage. Volt pressure's good. Idle is a little high. Uh, temperature's good. AC is cold. Seems like it's idling a little bit high. But uh, overall, a good car. You know, the dash is in good shape. Um, you know, just needs a little bit of TLC. I paid a lot of money for this car. These cars are getting expensive. But um, it's a nice car. It just, you know, needs a little more touch. You know, that's what we do with these cars. There's, there's purists out there who they complain about uh, us modifying the cars. This is our 46 car. I'd say there's probably about 100, maybe 120 DeLorean time machines out in the world. Now, considering they made over 9,000 cars, I mean, what are we talking about? Less than 1% or something of the cars have been modified. If you look at all the DeLoreans that's had any kind of modifications, less than maybe 10% of them, they think there's about six or 7,000 uh, of these cars still roaming around on the streets. 
So we're not in danger of losing. It's not like we're taking the last DeLorean and drilling holes in it. Um, I look for cars specifically that aren't perfect. This car's been heavily modified, not heavily modified, but I mean, you know, suspension has been changed. There's been changes to these interior things. This other part of the interior has been changed. It's got some dents and dings on it. So I try to find cars that aren't pristine and perfect. Have I used perfect cars in the past? Yes, I have. When I did Tony Parker's car, the basketball player, he had a thousand mile car that was mint. The guys over at DeLorean, Stephen Wynn and James, they were so pissed that I did that car. But I go, hey, listen, it's not my responsibility to preserve the DeLoreans. That's your job. So if you had a thousand mile car, you should have kept it in your showroom instead of selling it to a basketball player that sent it to me to turn it into a time machine. It's not my job. My job is turning them into time machines. There's people out there that hate that I do that. And one day, uh, this, this it will stop. Uh, there will be no more modifications to these cars once they become uber valuable. And we'll look back on these days and, and scratch our heads and go, wow, I can't believe that some bald bonehead in Texas was drilling holes in these cars and turning them into movie replicas. But you say the same thing about the 69 Dodge Chargers and, and you say the same thing about, you know, the Eleanor Mustangs and you say the same thing about Look at the Countach, you know, nobody's gonna take a, uh, uh, you know, an early version of a Countach and put a body kit on it. That would be stupid, right? And so one day we'll get to that level uh, with this car, but until then, I need to continue paying my rent, <laughs> paying my bills. And so as long as fans who have money keep paying me to build these time machines, they average, as of this recording, they average about one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars for one of these time machines, depending on the DeLorean and the modifications that are done. Like if you saw the car I sold at Barrett Jackson last summer, that car, by the after fees, was over one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. I saw a car, what two years ago, on Bring a Trailer sold for one hundred and seventy-eight thousand. That was one of my early cars. So I don't think we've seen a time machine break the two hundred thousand dollar mark yet that wasn't a screen used uh, or something like that car. We're building a time machine with an LS conversion. That's one of our next projects, an LS3 we want to put in the car, uh, which is why I bought those other two cars I showed you because I needed the frame. We're going to do some frame modifications. Anyway, uh, this car will go into production starting probably Monday, and um, they'll start cutting out the windows. They'll start. They'll remove the interior. They'll take out all this console, everything, and um, they'll start that process. Cole, my mechanic, will put it up on the lift. He'll drain all the fluids. He'll go through and check uh, the brakes, brake pads, um, look for leaks, look for any issues that need to be done, check wiring, all that kind of stuff. And then uh, we'll remove the back windows, rear louvers, that kind of stuff. Um, go over the body, make any simple modifications or changes that need to be done. And then we'll start with the conversion process, putting the flux boxes under the fenders, under the roof, doing the metal bands that go around the car, the wiring, uh, placing the props throughout the car, putting in the battery system and all that other. So here we go again. So if you're looking for a DeLorean time machine, uh, this one could be yours next. It'll be ready probably in about a month and um, it'll go up for sale and then we'll do it again. Testing out the shower. Hot water, hot, hot water. Oh, hot, hot tub, hot water. All right, I guess that about wraps up this update. Um, I wanted to mention, uh, I'm gonna put a link at the end of this video to a music video. You know Morris Day and the time from Prince, the movie Prince, Jungle Love, The Bird, you know. He was in town in Vegas a couple of months ago and um, he was doing a collaboration with Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top. I mentioned this before, um, and I reached out to the director, Champ Town, and um, wanted to be a part of the video, let him use my Rolls Royce in the video, drove Morris around and those guys, got to have dinner with him. What a nice guy he is. He's really, really sweet, super talent and a legend. So uh, thank you, Morris. Uh, for spending some time with me and I really am honored to have been there for this music video and while I was there you know being that I'm video Bob I started shooting some stuff just on my iPhone um, 
I went over and I looked at the cameraman's camera, matched my camera to his resolution, which was 4K 24 uh, frames a second, 24p, and um, just started shooting some stuff. And at the end of it, I gave him all the footage that I had. And uh, the director, uh, Champ County, goes, man, you got some really great shots. We want to use this in the video. So when you watch the video, uh, a lot of the handheld stuff that you see, some of the close-up stuff um, is stuff that I shot with my iPhone. And they mixed in the video. And if you don't blink, you'll see me here and there. Anyway, I'm very honored to have uh, been a part of it in just a tiny way. Fantastic couple of legends. Got to meet and hang out with uh, Billy Gibbons. And um, the guitar that you see, his Gretsch, you know, I ended up uh, taking one of those home and it's hanging on my wall. Uh, it's a long story. I'll tell, I'll tell the story one of these days, but it's not really a long story, but <clears throat> I have the guitar on my wall and he signed it and that was so much fun. So uh, at the end of this video, click the link and go watch uh, Morris Day and Billy Gibbons. Too much girl for me. <laughs> Stripes. That's here, amazing. Man. I gotta take a picture of that. Yeah, stripes, here we go. Wow. <laughs> hey, man, we gonna make this happen with the people. Okay, I know, I know, I know they're working. This shit gonna be hot. I know. This shit gonna be hot. I think I already got a um, beer company sponsor. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I think you might know him too. Oh, okay. I may know somebody. Okay. Yeah, I think you might know. I think you might That's know amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You're the king. Yep. You can come do my hot rod next. He's coming here in March. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.